I had a pretty extensive stint at Avanat. Who knows about Avanat? Okay. It's a consulting firm, 80% owned by Accenture and 20% owned by Microsoft. And I inherited some of the traits. I'm a, Mic I'm a Windows guy, so I'm, I don't use Mac. And after that, after that pretty extensive stint, I ventured into a startup myself on the retail domain. Uh, the use case is very simple, it's no secret. Whenever you go to a retail outlet, you get paper receipts dispensed by a printer. So our idea was to convert it to an e-receipt dispensed by an NFC writer to your mobile phone. And then build a huge cloud service to get all the e-receipts yeah, and build on top of it. It's something similar to mint.com, but applied to retail domain. And we fail fast. And after that, um, I'm consulting to this company now, Playware Studios. And I'm working there as an engineering manager. And we do data science stuff as well. Uh, before I go into the slides proper, I just want to give you some context of, uh, sorry. Oops. So we, we all use Google, always. And if we don't have Google, we will die. So here, for example, you can type anything and you get results, right? And what about image search? And you remember there is a dust, li little nifty icon there. So you can click on it. And you can, you can paste a URL or you can upload an image. So I'm going to upload an image now. So let's say, let's take this, I this image. So there you go. So basically it says that this is the image and this is the size of the image. And it tries to identify the image, which is a bag. And then it gives you similar bags. I mean, like, which is nearest to that particular image. These are the nearest images to the bag. Yeah, sometimes. It's very basic. And think about how much resources would have gone in, how much uh, uh, machine learning code, how much infrastructure would have gone in to build this whole big search engine, especially with respect to image. Keep the thought aside. Uh, let me move on to the slides now. I'm going to talk about, uh, well, whether I'm going to inspire you or bore you, I would know at the end of the talk. So first, I'm going to talk about the motivation and challenge uh, about building this experiment to build a visual search engine. And how did I end up from concept to code? I think pretty much I hacked it around in two to three weeks' time. And then the tech stack involved. And I'll show you about the code and demo. And I'll talk about the search singularity, the topic itself, and finally about the collaborative call. There's one more motivation, because I was talking about Google. There's one more motivation which I want to talk about. I'm an avid user of this app. So I think you have a lot of, you may have a lot of things in your home which you want to declutter and you want to sell away. And you can always save money with this. So you, I think you would have guessed what is this app is all about. <laughs> and it's so incidental that um, I didn't pick up uh, Carousel as a use case, but I ended up, it was a mere coincidence. Because when I finished this experiment, I did blog it. It was around the end of November, December timeline. So I didn't expect that I would present the same thing in Carousel. So, so you know the tagline. <laughs> so at that point of time, I was thinking, what if I could snap an image and then look up at uh, Carousel to see whether that particular object of my passion, of my interest, is available in the second-hand market? If somebody wants to sell that particular book, just say for $2, it'll be a great bargain for me. So that was one of the motivation. I thought, well, if there could be a nifty feature, that'll be very useful. So perhaps then you had to change the tagline, something like this. 
So that's one of the motivations. So, so how do I build a solution, a reverse visual search engine? So these things came to my mind. So what is the source? Where can I get the images? What kind of compute should I use? Should I use cloud or should I just go with my laptop because it's going to be an experiment? And what kind of models can I use, uh, machine learning models that can speed up my uh, search? Uh, sorry. And with respect to performance, how performant it should be. Should it return results in, in a minute or maybe three seconds? Because in Google, we saw it was returning about 0.5 seconds. So how do I present this? Should I build a mobile app or should I build a web app? So these were the considerations when I started the experiment. Uh, well, I was thinking, I was doing a thought experiment. If I'm running a company, so what would I do? Would I build or buy? And there were a lot of uh, third-party services available on the web. So first is uh, the Vicense. Vicense is a cloud web service which allows you to do visual, visual search. So basically, if you have millions of images, you just uh, send it to them, and then they will give you an API to do the search. And they are a local firm. Vicense is a local firm. And the other ones are from uh, US. And Thread Genius is the late uh, entry into the market. They are very good as well. So in my case, what's my personal take and motivation to build this is basically just to build a simple prototype for web. Don't build a mobile application because it's going to be a bit complicated. Avoid data leak. Well, if I'm going to run a startup and if I have lots and lots of images, I don't want to send all my images to a third party service. So that's one of the motivation as well. So last one is to learn new things in uh, machine learning and Python. So that's the idea behind. So again, concept to code. So first thing is sources. Well, I was looking at Carousel, and then I was, OK, I'll take some of the images from Carousel itself to build the prototype. So I'll build a crawler, and I'll capture the metadata, and I'll also put it on an image repository. Second one, I'll use cloud. Uh, that's where I think uh, the title comes that you can build a reverse engine for zero dollars. Well. If you go to Google now, and if you put your credit card, they'll give you three months free of uh, compute time, and with pretty large servers. So that's why I said, uh, the other thing is, as you can see, BYOD. I think that's the metaphor I'm, I want to try to use here. Bring your own device. So if I'm a startup, I want to build my own service. So that's the idea behind it. So development. <laughs> when I was doing this experiment, it was, the timeline was November last year, November, December. Until November, TensorFlow was not available on Windows platform. So I can't use my Windows machine. So, so that is one of the key points here. So I have to move on to Linux then. Of course, I don't want to build my own model. I don't want to train huge number of images. So I will go for a pre-trained uh, ML model. And using that model, I'll extract the images. So the last one is I was looking at three to four seconds search response of 100K images. And how do I do the web UI? So I wanted to learn on Python Flask. Uh, sorry, I'll come back to that. So basically, it should allow you to uh, upload an image, something similar to Google. And then it should allow me to crop the image. Whenever you, you take a photo, it's going to be huge. Maybe you want to focus on a particular area. So that's where you should have a cropping functionality. And it should also check for appropriateness. Sometimes uh, if you're going to build a commercial service, somebody's going to upload certain inappropriate content. So it should flag whether it's appropriate or inappropriate. 
Well, um, tech stack, uh, well, the crawler is built on Python, pure Python code, and I'm using SQL Lite as my image repository. Uh, Linux file storage to keep all your image files and index files. Well, uh, I used cloud, Google Cloud. It gave me three months, free trial. Uh, I settled upon Ubuntu Linux VM. So I have no choice. I don't have a Mac, so I have to go with that. And since I'm a Microsoft guy, I went with VS Code. It's a very nifty <coughs> editor, uh, so I use that. And I used Inception V3 model, which is a pre-trained model on ImageNet. So that's a very good starting point for you. Well, it's the typical KNN search that I used. Um, for web UI, I used uh, Flask, Angular, and Bootstrap. So this is the tech stack. OK, the code. So I was searching GitHub if there are any other codes, similar codes that I can tap on as a starting point. But there was one, but it was very buggy. I think it's very typical about GitHub. Whenever you publish your personal projects, it's going to work at that point of time. Maybe some of the services are there, some of the services are gone. So I did ended up finding one project, but it was totally buggy, and, but it gave me a good starting point. But, but the whole code is available here, so you can go here and you can download the code. And there's also a blog which details all the thing. So I'm just going to give you a brief uh, how, how the code is organized. Basically, there are two Python files. So the first one is to extract um, uh, features from your images. And the second one is to do the crawling. So the web app is under app code. And you have all the settings under this file. Uh, this, is, this allows you to run your web app on the web. Uh, uh, this is very important. The network.protobuf file is the Inception v3 protobuf file. So this is basically the pre-trained model, a protobuf file given by Google. And the last one is your uh, database, your SQLite database. So I'll just briefly run through the crawler before I go into the code and show you how uh, the images are crawled and stored. Yeah, when I started and uh, I was looking at this uh, carousel app, I wanted to know how images are served in the mobile app. So pretty much uh, you have to do a bit of reverse engineering hack. And then um, you look at how the API is serving the images. So what you do is basically you take your Android phone you set up your fiddler, and then you can see what is going in and around. So that's how you, you find out what's the API signature. Well, after finding out the API signature, what I did is I just uh, built an iterative routine to fetch the images of that API. Um, how do I fetch the images? Basically, you use the request.get, and you pass the return JSON, and you fill the SQL tree. Sorry, SQLite 3 db uh, Well, I, I designed the crawlers to be item content. So whenever there is an issue in your crawler, it'll just crash or whatever it is. You just go and re restart it again. So it'll, it'll again fetch all the images. If the image is already there, it won't fetch. And I assume that there is only uh, JPEG and PNG images are served by the API. Yeah, so these are the modules that I used in Python. So request, JSON, yeah, you are in there. So what I'm going to do is, um, so this is pretty much uh, the server that I'm running on the cloud. It's running off uh, Azure. So I just um, started an instance on Azure, Linux instance. So just to show you, um, so that's the home directory. So what I'm going to do is, so I did a git pull, and then the code is under TensorFlow search.
So what I told you, the organized, how it is organized. So basically you have your crawler here and your uh, inception.pyy will be having your indexer. Your settings file is here um, and your app code, which is your web app is over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run the I'm using Fabric to run uh, the crawler now. So what I'm going to do is shop site images. So before I run this, I just want to show you. Um, so this is the code, fab, fab file.py. That's your code. And this is the routine, the crawler. So basically, it's going to get some images from Carousel. So, so this is how I think this is the API and a couple of things. I'm going to insert whatever images I'm going to get into SQL 3 uh, light DB. So the code is going to run and fetch um, whether it's PNG or JPEG images, and then it's going to push it to the uh, SQL light DB. And there's one more thing. What you can do is um, there's a settings um, <coughs> which allows you to like do the steps. So how many iterations, how many collections you want to do. So those things you can set it here. So I'm, I'm going to simply say pseudo fab shop site images. So it's going to just download all the images and it's going to just push it to the SQL deep, um, SQLite DB. So for this case, for the trial, for the demo, I just downloaded about 45 I mean, 50 images it processed. There were some issues on five images, so 45 images came in. So the images will normally go to, yeah. So this is how it is organized. So all your images will go to image folder. And when I build the index, it will go to the index folder uh, of TensorFlow. And this is your database where all the metadata and uh, the image uh, uh, locations are kept. And once the images are processed, it moves to this folder. So, so if I go to the images folder, it should have images. Yeah, so just now we downloaded some of the images and the images are there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to index these files now. So I'll run this sudo fab index. So this is the routine that I'm going to run. So if I go back to the code, oops, index. Ah, here you go. So this is the index routine. So basically what's going to happen is, so all the images that I've shown in that particular folder, it's going to run through TensorFlow. And then we're going to extract features from the images. And then we're going to store it as index files. So this is the routine which is going to run. <coughs> as you can see here, uh, basically we're going to load the inception protobuf file. And then um, for each of the images, we're going to extract the features. So that's what I'm going to run. So, oops. Oh, OK. My location is wrong.
I think it should be in a few seconds, it should be over because we have only 50 images. So yeah, so it's done. So if I go back to that particular directory, home slash deep slash images. So they're all gone. So if you move to, so all the images have come here. And if I move to uh, index, you can see the index files there. So these are the index files created for all the images. We had about 50 images. So what I'm gonna do now is, I just want to um, launch the web app now. So what I'm gonna do is, I have to move back to that directory. So full search. So pseudo in pseudo fab. So server. So this should launch this will launch the web app. So essentially, it has loaded all the NPY files, basically all the index files that we built out of TensorFlow. Okay, this machine, this, uh, as you can see here, the tri-core machine is a is a Azure machine. So what I'm going to do is, I'll just go back to my uh, server. So this is the IP uh, where the machine is being there. So I'm going to run this. Ah, taking a while. Um, okay. So as it is running, perhaps, um, Okay, alternatively, I'll move back to the slides and... Uh, oh, no, no, that's locally, because when you run, when you launch your... Okay, never mind. So I do have one more which I have built and kept it. So this is how it will appear. So you have a shop site visual search server. And I'll come back to this UI. Uh, I'll switch back to the um, slides for now, and I'll come back to the visual search UI again. So just now I showed you. Um, oops. Okay. Just now I showed you uh, the TensorFlow's uh, pre-trained model, the protobuffer file that we use to train and extract the features. So this inception is given by Google. So if you want to try community-developed uh, pre-trained models, this is a very good website. If you go there, a lot of people have trained their own uh, pre-trained models on top of inception. And even now we have Inception v4. So you can, you can go here and take a look. You can use that uh, models. You can use the code here and try it out. So what we do in the indexer is basically uh, we use this particular feature, the Incept bar pool 3.0. And then using this, we will extract the image features. And that's why you see the NPY files generated. And then what we do is we will chunk uh, 500 images together as one single file. So that's how we do for very large amount of files. Okay, with respect to UI, so it's using Flask framework and it's using Jinja 2 templates, Angular and Bootstrap, of course. Um, what I did is I also added this Clarify API. So, what does it do? Basically, it'll do object classification. It'll guess what is the object inside the image. So that is what is, it's going to do, similar to what Google was doing. Remember, it, it made a guess, and it said it's a bag. So for that, I'm going to use utilize this API. 
And I'm, gonna, I'm also going to use the same API for this particular part. And it will flag whether your content that you have uploaded, whether it's appropriate or inappropriate. Well, how do, I, how do we do our nearest search? <coughs> We're going to use the NearPy package. Uh, it's, very, it's a very fantastic package. It, it gives you nearest neighbor search in a very large, high dimensional data. And if you look at uh, uh, the NPY files we generated, basically it has about 2048 bytes of the features. Every image, it'll, it'll, it'll go and fetch 2048 byte size of the feature. Uh, no matter what kind of resolution is your image is, it doesn't matter. So that's how um, it will generate the feature. And then we can use this. It's very fast. But we can also use a brute force method. Basically, you use this particular method. And then you use Euclidean distance to find the very nearest images out there. OK, so, uh, let me move back to the image, uh, to the demo. <coughs> Okay, the, uh, this particular website is running on a different, oops, you don't see it, oops. How do I escape? So this is how the visual search will appear. And actually, I'm running one more app on a different, uh, a different Azure Linux machine over there. So what you can do is, I just want to add an image, and I want to do a search. So what I do is, I'll just use the same bag that I uh, uploaded to Google. So this is the bag image. And I'm going to do a search now. So the approximate search is the fastest search that we saw just now. And the search by image is the brute first search. So I'll do this now. So this is how the bags that you get, the nearest images for that. And the other feature that I spoke about is um, the image tags. As you can see, it has detected that it's a bag, luggage, leather, whatever. And uh, it's managed to do the search in in 2.5 seconds. Google was 0.5 seconds, so we can't match them. So the approximate was finished in 1.6 seconds. Um, ah, the inappropriate content is here. So it gives you a probability that this content is appropriate, 0.99. Uh, perhaps if you, if you try yourself with some other images, then you can get the appropriateness. So uh, the next thing is, I want to do the search by image. And let's see. It's more better, but it takes more time. So what I can do is, I can exclude some of the content here. I want to focus on a particular area. I can say that I don't want this particular area. And then uh, I will do a search now. So it's going to exclude that particular part. Maybe I should use some other image. Let's try to add some other image. Um, so this is with the approximate search. Let's do a um, search with, um, there you go. So the nearest is here. And using uh, Angular and Bootstrap, what I did is I just introduced an icon here, which can straight away take to Carousel. So I can try to build the whole site as, uh, as an aggregation of different e-commerce sites. I can pull all their images and metadata. And then I can provide a service where people can quickly search and then buy their second-hand item in whichever uh, service that's going to offer me that. So let's try the exclude part again. Uh, maybe I want to exclude uh, this part. 
Okay, so There you go. So it has excluded some of the content on top, and then it's trying to do a search based on this. So as you can see here. So I cut off the head and everything. So you can see the results. Most of them are cut off with the head. So. Switch back to my thing. OK. Coming back to search singularity. <clears throat> well, uh, why I want the search to be remarkable is this is one way to make your search, visual search, very remarkable. It is basically, if you're going to take a snap of any picture, and if you give it to a search engine, visual search engine, it should immediately tell you what's the content in the image. Perhaps it should even identify the brand. And even more, it should give you the context. It should get the context and location from your mobile phone and then even add more uh, metadata for you, then it becomes seamless for you. You can buy, or it, it should even list all the services that, that is offering this with the offers. So that, that'll be very cool. And how do we achieve that? So uh, as I was going through some of the literature, what I found is this, this is one, one way to achieve that. So what you can do is um, you can build an object detector because whenever you take a snap of any object, there, there's going to be multiple objects. So you need to find out each of those objects. So one, one uh, way is to do is called region proposal network. So that's, that's latest in the literature, which allows you to quickly find out the various subparts, subobjects in an image. And once you identify the sub-objects, what you can do is you can do a feature extraction. So let's say uh, within this figure, if there's going to be uh, boots, uh, jacket, whatever, maybe. So for each of the object, you're going to extract some features. And then you're also, you're also going to look at metric learning. That's one of the newest uh, addition to the machine learning, where they are looking at the metric distances, which is used for nearest searches. Um, you, you have Euclidean distance, which we used, but there are a lot of other distances which you can use. And the latest one is called large margin nearest neighbors. And it's very good for very large dimensional data, data, data points. So basically, you can use these, use these two features. You can also look at training data from various uh, uh, web resources. And let's say if you're Carousel or some other service, you can just push all the images, and then you can use this. And you can use the GPU servers, and you can use Airflow. Obviously, the, the ML stack is over here. Then you can come up, uh, then you can do the Singularity API, which, which, is, which is really cool. Um, well, another take on S Singularity is basically, um, uh, are you aware of Solar, Lucene, search engine? So I think we can attempt to build something similar to Solar and Lucene, where um, it should be able to ingest any image, any type resolution, batch in real time. So it should take all the images. And even it should, it should take feeds of uh, videos, if possible. And then it should have some crawlable, pluggable engine. So you can just put that engine, and it's going to crawl any website or any APIs, and then get all your images. And then you can also use pre-trained um, models. So it should, it should also be pluggable within the engine, so you can have any pre-trained models. 
then you can store all your metadata in Lucene. And finally, you can, you can do this, basically. So it's a kind of uh, solar for images, because we have solar for search. Basically, it's text search. So why don't we take this and adopt it for image? So this, this is the architecture, of course. Yeah, so coming back to the final slide. <clears throat> I'm working on a very interesting web API, uh, web app and API. So it's all about uh, neural nets for unsupervised entity extraction. Um, and I'm also looking at human intervention framework, which is basically like uh, once you have done the first step, perhaps some of the entities may not be able to be extracted properly, uh, maybe a misfit, which you want to post it back to uh, Amazon MTurk so that they can figure out what is exactly the entity is all about. So a kind of framework where once you have run your ML job, basically you have certain uh, data points which are properly predicted, properly identified. There are some missing points which you want to give it back to manual intervention. So that is about this and about crowdsourced uh, data entry, entity entry. So this, this app is covering all these three areas. So I'm looking at whoever is interested can talk to me uh, because I'm, I'm started on this, this thing. And finally, the code is there. You can go to this GitHub uh, address, the code. All the code is over there. Oops. Yep. That's, that's it about my presentation. So if you have any questions. Have you tried this one with the Google's vision API, extracting the objects and things from the No, I didn't. Uh, because I want to learn TensorFlow, and I don't want to uh, leverage on all the APIs which I listed as well. Like uh, Google, Google provides its own engine to extract, but Vicense and those trade. Um, yeah, so those are the ones where, where you, you push your image and they will do the stuff. But I didn't try that. The question was whether I was, try, uh, whether, try, uh, yeah, whether I was trying Google's Google Visual API Google engine. And Microsoft are actually betting heavily on it and they provide first sure. million free APIs. Um, so if you build with them, actually, and the thing is what you talked about this one, right? Crowdsource entity entry, right? Mm -hmm. Google is doing it in a very, very big scale by putting captures. So when you use Google captures in your website, you do a marking of it, this is a sign. So you select three images which are the sign, or the images which have uh, mountains, or which images which have photos. Those are the images coming from, actually, this framework only where you identify. Mm -hmm. They help you, they use this data to fit into their own learning algorithm again. OK. So I think uh, what he mentioned is the Google API engine. There are a couple of functions there. One is object detection. Uh, what is there inside an image, uh, whether it's uh, uh, whether it's a shoe or a watch. So that, uh, that particular function identifies the various subparts. The other one is even they have an inappropriate content flagging as well. So there are numerous features out there. But well, for my experiment, I want to learn. So, no, no, that is perfect. Yeah. Right. so that's, that's a reason. Yeah. No, but then you should use one. Google is also giving us training data, mm -hmm. I think 3 TV of training data or images to train your But I don't have the money to then <laughs> download all the 3 TV and <laughs> Play around. Also published because the problem in creating model is basically your training data. Mm. Where you get it? They have a lot of data, but you as a user, you cannot get it. As a, you know, if you are starting in a single way, so I think they provided three dB of data. I was trying, but sure. didn't try it yet. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Mm -hmm. So, oh, so your question is whether I have to iterate uh, and take every image and then generate the features? Yes. Uh, yes, obviously. For this case, yes, you have to do that because every image has, uh, you have to extract the, uh, the features. Then only you can do a search. If not, then you won't be able to do a search. Yeah. Well, uh, the one that I was running, uh, it has about um, 39K images, so 39,000 images. The question is, 
what's the performance and how much images was used in the website, uh, the, which I showed you. It has 40,000 images. And the search response is about three seconds for the brute force uh, nearest search. And the fast search is about 1.5. Oh, yeah. OK. So coming back to that, uh, what happens if the image size is going to get larger and larger? I think um, what you have to do is, right now, all our searches are, all the indexes are in the files. And what, what's going to happen is, if I'm going to do a brute force nearest search, I'm going to load all the images, uh, 2048 bytes, into memory. And I'm going to do some search in the memory. So there is a limitation, but we have to find out a way where we can store all the indexes on a database, which is so quick. So that's, that's one of the ways to address that limitation. So have you got any way of doing, you know, say, a GP, GPU run KDOS tables? Oh, no, I haven't tried on a GPU yet. Have this you, is. Have you tried the Facebook library face? Uh, no, I didn't. Maybe I have to, I have to give it a try. Facebook just released a library that does this a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Facebook's doing this for every single thing on Facebook. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in including, including videos, any multimedia document goes through a CNN and gets its features extracted. But then what, what is the, what's the storage mechanism to store uh, the indexes? So, they, so they're using this thing called Face, which basically does uh, use neighbors kind of searches. So the other thing I was curious is you're not convert, converting them into embedding files or anything like that. No. Uh, so it's, it's purely files which has the features as a, as a binary data, and then you load it into memory. That's it. Uh, the question is, am I categorizing the images? No. Um, for this experiment, I just want to see how the nearest search is, uh, whether I'm able to perform a nearest search using TensorFlow. Uh, coming to that point, I shared you about search singularity. What we can do is basically you can take an image, you can do some object identification, and based on that, you can uh, uh, figure out a lot of features. Like, for example, in a, in a fashion domain, you can take an image and you can say, uh, what kind of tease it is, whether it's men's or women's or kids. So you can, you can start doing this classification, and then you can take the attributes, and then you can store it. And that's where you can speed up the whole thing. Did you see one experiment in which one guy put a TensorFlow model on a Raspberry Pi? And did a, there is a video, right? Mm -hmm. So he put a camera module on the Raspberry Pi. And in real time, it can detect a moving train in the image. And give a 90, uh, I think, Tried three times, so it trained the model. Did you see that? Oh no! Sorry. So we put the whole model on a Raspberry Pi, mm -hmm. and in real time, you can detect the train. Yeah, possible. Was, Could be. Actually, that was pretty interesting. I saw that one, and, and because Raspberry Pi doesn't have a computing power, mm -hmm. but it was able to do in real time. That but, was what it was yeah, incidentally, uh, tens. That can recognize that it's a train. Because there are the chances of getting a bus passing by because of the road nearby. I think his question is uh, whether we can apply. Uh, in a way, I did use the question is whether TensorFlow models can be used in your mobile phone. Yes, I mean, like TensorFlow is available on mobile, and you can use TensorFlow for object detection and everything. What's the hardest part of the project? <coughs> What's the hardest part of the project? Oh, it's the learning curve. I mean, like you have to learn tons of things here. I mean, like. Um, What's the hardest to learn? What's which which one was hardest to learn? Well, it's not TensorFlow. It was like all the flask, uh, fabric, <laughs> and stuff, which is, which I'm totally new. So, <laughs> TensorFlow is very easy. I mean, like, just use the protobuf model, get the features out, you're done. And also, you have to figure out the nearest search, how you do the nearest search and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any trouble with uh, troubling, like carousel your <laughs> I thought somebody will <laughs> ask this question. Okay. Um, there was no issue on throttling, but you guys need to put a check uh, whether you're uh, sending back your API results very quick. And you have to put a throttle check in your API to see whether the requests are coming from one particular IP address very, very fast. Then you should 
just stop that IP. Don't serve results anymore. Just stop it. That's a good way. I mean, like, so you don't allow people to go and scrap as they want. No, but I think they, they, they stop scrapping by putting a policy. But anyway, I mean, Google is scrapping every, every site. And so, so you have to be mindful of that. Yeah, but they're not using carousels privately. No, I'm not. Uh, it's, it's a public API anyway, so. Um, I have no idea, man. Like, <laughs> I can build a web service where we can just take it to. I mean, you can build your own uh, web service which you can offer to um, commercial organizations to do visual search. But there's a lot of improvement that has to be done. It's, it's very, very crude, and the response time is very low. And uh, you have to really take it for a ride and see how it. What do you call as? Oh, uh, okay. So the idea behind uh, naming uh, the talk as search singularity is to, first is to grab attention. The next is to talk about how far search is now improved uh, compared to last time. And especially with the machine learning, it's going to get even better and better. So that's where singularity comes in. So how remarkable is your search going to be in future? So I hope it, uh, it would have given you a glimpse of how it's going to be. So in future, you take your mobile phone, you just take a snap. You're going to get tons of information of that particular snap. And it could even say, who is this person, and his history, and everything. So that's going to happen. Is there today in Google Photos? Mm, well, not, not so much. I mean, like, no, not so much. That much. You click on a photo, if you have a small face, right? That face can be hidden in a very small part of your hundreds of people, and it will be able to correctly identify better than a human being. Uh, no, we are talking about more domain oriented. I mean, like, we can take this whole concept and apply it to a, um, a fashion domain and make sure that your search is so accurate, which Google has not done yet. We are very generic now. So you can, you can, you can take it to different, different domains and uh, make it more and more better. No, it's always on. It's it's ongoing. It's it's always evolving. There's no uh, perfection for anything. I mean, like if you take any any endeavor in life, yeah. uh, any process. Obviously, accuracy will keep improving. I mean, like uh, right now. I mean, as you saw, we did the search, and if the features are very exact, it's okay. If not, sometimes you get very bizarre results as well. Yeah. So that is the, that is where you have to improve upon. Well, honestly, I did. I didn't want to experiment more on the on the f uh, extra features because I thought I'll make the application complete first to make it run. Perhaps next iteration I would look at auto encoders and uh, all these stuff, yeah, so. Since it started with Google, uh, Oh no, uh, I just want to give you an option where, uh, the question is, uh, why did I use Google model, right? Google pre model rather than other models. Well, if you're going to use TensorFlow, the official model that is available is like Inception. Uh, V3 is the latest model from Google, which is very easy to use and quick. Um, what I listed here is perhaps there are other options as well. I mean, like um, people in the community have, t have took Inception V3 model, and they have uh, trained it better for certain domains. So if there is a model available for fashion domain, if I'm going to use this service for fashion, I could very well go to the community and take that model and apply it and see whether if, it, if it's going to give better results, I would rather use it rather than train myself from scratch. So the idea is to give you an option where there are uh, community models that are available as well. And off late, we have uh, Inception v4 also coming. coming.
Anything? Oh, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, th well, the question is, where, did I compare my service, the performance, with the other service I listed? Well, I just want to give you an idea. Like this is very rudimentary. This is very. Uh, I, I understood your yeah. part, but just for how did it look? Did you even have the QSA? No, I thought why? Sh no, the the basic premise that I listed is BYO BYOS. Yeah. So why don't you build your own service rather than depending on somebody else? So that's the idea. So I didn't compare. Um, but again, if you want to do comparison, then you have to go and get their APIs, then you have to push your image, and then you have to, I mean, there could be some trials, but Vicense is not giving a trial. Um, IQNet, all the services are not giving trial. So, except clar clarify, clarify, that one gives uh, a trial. So that's why I'm using the trial to, to do the object detection. So most of the services are very enterprise oriented. So you have to pay them to get your, so I can't compare. So thank you, that's it, so thank you.